65. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Don't be satisfied with smokes that never taste quite right. Choose Lucky Strike, there's better taste in every one you light. Absolutely. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. I love my Dan, he's quite a man and knows just what I like. He gives me better tasting smokes, you bet they're Lucky Strike. And remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, if you want complete smoking enjoyment, just light up a Lucky, because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette you've ever smoked. You see, fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco, always gives you the enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Yes, every Lucky you light always gives you mildness, richness, truly better taste that add up to complete smoking enjoyment. So for everything you want in your cigarette, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. From the Nellis Air Force Base, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from Nellis Air Base, right outside of Las Vegas. We wanted to bring you a slot machine, but since we can't, we bring you something else that doesn't pay off. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Benny! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, isn't it exciting being here at... <laughs> And there goes one of those jet planes they have here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there. Look at down. There goes another one. Well, they certainly fly low. You're not kidding. This morning, I was walking around the field here. One of them came so low, it took my hair off. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're not serious. Yes, I am, Don. Somewhere up in the wild blue yonder is an F-84 with a blonde landing gear. <laughs> But you know, Don, these jet planes amaze me. How, how can they go so fast? Oh, it's really quite simple, Jack. Simple? Certainly. You see, on a jet in the air is drawn into the compressor and forced into the combustion chambers, where it mixes with the injected fuel and... <laughs> 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 Now, do you understand it, Jack? Yes, yes, but I'd never be able to explain it to anybody. I've got a loose pivot to it. <laughs> but, Don, it's not only the planes that amaze me. It's the fellas here. They seem so young, especially the officers. Oh, you're right about that, Jack. In fact, the commanding officer, Colonel Tacon, is one of the youngest full colonels in the Air Force. Oh, I didn't know that, Don. You say, oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. <laughs> Well, how, how do you like it up here, Mary? Oh, that's your line, Don. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take it, huh? Well, Mary, instead of Jack asking you, I will. How do you like it up here? Are you enjoying your visit to the air base? Oh, very much, Don. But I guess I'm old-fashioned. Everything around here is so fast. You're right, Mary. The, the planes here are the fastest in the world. I was talking about the pilots. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Mary, uh, did you meet any of the pilots? Uh, yes, this morning. One of them took me up for a ride in a jet. And as we were speeding along, he asked me for a kiss, then kissed me. <laughs> kissed you? Well, didn't you say no? Certainly. But we were traveling faster than sound, and by the time my no caught up with us... <laughs> Wait a minute, Barry. <laughs> These boys are faster than you are. <laughs> Barry, listen. If yes? you were traveling faster than sound, how could you hear what he asked you? I caught that on the way back. <laughs> well, now I'm all confused. Oh, uh, Jack, I'm just teasing you. The pilots here are very nice. Yes, they are, Mary. And to show my appreciation for their hospitality, I brought, a, I brought along a present for Colonel Tacon. Oh, uh, what'd you get the Colonel, Jack? An electric razor. It's a, it's a real good one. He can't use that. He doesn't shave yet. <laughs> oh, stop making things up. The colonel's not that young. He's 36. Just three years younger than I am. <laughs> Who was that? The colonel. Oh, that was the colonel Yes, that was the colonel He hates to think he's going to look like you in three short years Now, Mary, Mary, you can stop with that stuff Sometimes, hey, here comes another jet plane It's coming right for the building Don, open the window Got it <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Right through the Venetian blind <laughs> Oh, Jack. Yes, Mary. It's back on your head again, but the part's running from side to side. <laughs> well, he'll probably come back to straighten it. I'm going to ask him to fly me to Salt Lake City. I have to be there Monday and Tuesday. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. <laughs> Well, Dennis, are you enjoying yourself here at the base? Yeah, but I'm worried. Where's the telephone? I want to call the police. Call the police? Why? Somebody stole the propellers off all the planes. <laughs> what? Dennis, the planes here have no propellers. They're jets. Well, how can anything fly without a propeller? I wouldn't know, but the boys in Phil's band do it all the time. <laughs> Oh. Uh, what have you been doing since you arrived, Dennis? Oh, a lot of things. Yesterday I took a boat cruise on Lake Mead. Gee, he was the most beautiful boat I ever saw. What'd you say, Dennis? I said he was the most beautiful boat I ever saw. Dennis, you mean she was the most beautiful boat. You should know that. Well, you'll have to forgive me. My mother only told me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> What? I guess she wanted my father to tell me about boats. <laughs> Dennis, all boats are she's. There are no he's. Then where did the little boats... They build them! They build them! <laughs> they build them! <laughs> I'll stop. Now, stop asking silly questions and sing your song. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny. Now what? I just saw a picture of you and Mary on the cover of the latest issue of Look Magazine. Oh, our picture's on the cover of Look Magazine? Well, uh -huh. what do you know? I didn't know that was out yet. Where'd you see it, Dennis? It's sticking out of your pocket. <laughs> I must have put on Mary's coat by mistake. She's such a ham, you know? <laughs> now, Dennis, go ahead and sing your song, will yes, you? Yes, sir. Goodbye, I'm sorry From the bottom of my heart I apologize If I call 
caused you pain I know I'm to blame Must have been insane Believe me From the bottom of my heart I apologize I realize I've been unfair to you Please let me make amends Got the love we knew After all, we were more than friends If I've made you blue I've had heartaches too Now I beg of you Forgive me As I Apologize, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris, whose orchestra just gave you the sound that everybody is trying to fly faster than. <laughs> and now, fellas... All right, break it up, will you? Get off of it. Let's knock it off. Phil! Break it up. <laughs> Listen to me, Jackson. Don't be talking about my boys like that. Huh? <laughs> They ain't so bad. They ain't, eh? Well, I disagree, Phil. They is. <laughs> uh, Jack's right, Phil. I think you ought to do something about the boys in your orchestra. They look awful. <laughs> Take it a little easier, Liv. If I were you, I wouldn't say too much around here. You know, you're not so popular at this base. What do you mean? Fellas around here really have it in for you. Oh, Phil, don't be ridiculous. Well, all I know is there's a sign outside of one of them buildings that says, In for Mary. That's infirmary! <laughs> in for Mary. It's a natural mistake for a chap who was in a spelling bee and was nosed out by the bee. <laughs> Never mind that. And, Phil, now that we have taken this short pause for character identification, <laughs> why didn't you show up at rehearsal yesterday? Well, I'm sorry, Jackson, but I was out on Lake Mead. And say, you ought to come out with me sometime. That fishing out there is great. Well, I don't know, Phil. Lake Mead, that's 30 miles away. Isn't there any place closer? Well, there's a river about 10 miles from here where I used to go fishing, but it's no good anymore because it's dried up. You mean the water's all gone? Jackson, that river's so dry, the salmon have to walk six miles up a dirt road to spawn. <laughs> No. I don't get it. <laughs> What's the matter with you, kid? That's a funny joke. Don't you know nothing about salmon? I don't even know about boats. <laughs> Quiet, Dennis. Phil, who else is going fishing? Oh, Remley, my guitar player. I always take him with me. You know, when you hook them big fish, they put up an awful struggle, and then that's where the teamwork comes in. Teamwork? Yeah, I haul them in as close as I can. Remley breathes on them, and they do the Tennessee waltz right into the... <laughs> A little ad libby in there, huh? Right? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be darned. Last time, Jackson, we had to throw one back. Oh, too small? No, he was under 21. <laughs> oh, fine. Say, <laughs> Phil, did you catch anything while you were out on the lake this morning? Ah, uh, yeah, Dante. I hooked a whopper. Wait a minute. I even got a picture of it. Yeah. Look at the size of that bass. Let me, uh... <laughs> let me... Let me see it, Phil. Here you are. Oh, isn't that cute? The bass is holding you up. <laughs> yeah. You ought to see the size of the trout that took the picture. Now, cut 
What's that on? You know, Phil, if you just open your eyes once in a while, you could... Excuse me. Come in. Well, Mr. Kitzel. How oh, he partner. Mr. Kessel, what are you doing here at Nellis Field? Oh, I'm visiting my nephew. He's stationed here. Oh, is he a pilot? Is he a pilot? (laughs) (laughs) Yesterday, he got a six-hour pass and visited his girl in Cleveland. He went 500 miles an hour. In a jet? No, in a jeep. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Kitzel. How could a Jeep possibly go that fast? When you're stationed at Nellis and get a pass, the Jeep is as anxious to get away as you are. (laughs) Well, Mr. Mr. Kitzel, I'd like to meet your nephew. Is he on the base? Yes, in fact, right now he's busy cleaning up the grounds. Oh. My nephew walks all over the base. He's got a stick with a nail on the end of it. A stick with a... Oh, he uses it to pick up trash. Officially, he is known as a waste paper croupier. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Yes. Well, I got to be toddling along. So long, partner. So long. Off I go into the wild blue yonder. And now, fellas, in honor of Nellis Air Base, I'd like... Oh, just a second, Jack. Uh, Hold it. What is it, Don? Well, if anybody's going to do anything in honor of the base here, it should be the Sportsman Quartet. The Quartet? Yeah, they've prepared a special number for this occasion. All about the boys here. Well, let's hear it. Come on. All of the fellas now stationed at Nellis, a furlough is the boys' best friend. The ground crews and flyers have many desires, but the first they say, let's get away for just one day. In the sky they love to fly, but the moment they start to descend, they can't help but wonder, has she changed her number? A furlough is a boy's best friend. You want to relax and you may feel like smoking, a lucky strike is your best friend. Good, Don. Now you can put the boys back in the guardhouse there. <laughs> now, come on, kids. Let's finish the program so I can get back to my hotel and get some rest. Rest? Why, you told me you went to bed early last night. I did, but I didn't get much sleep. I can't understand why a ritzy hotel like the Flamingo would have such a silly telephone operator. Well, what do you mean? Well, when I went to bed, I left a call for 8 o'clock. The operator wanted to make it the hard way, so she called me twice at 4. <laughs> I wish I'd have had ten for a point. I'd have gotten an hour's more sleep. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Jackson. Uh, you, uh, you're staying at the Flamingo Hotel? Why, certainly, Phil. You know nothing but the best for me. After all, when you get to a town like Las Vegas, you, you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Livy, what are you laughing at? Jack, tell him what happened when you walked in to get a room. Oh, Mary, forget it. <laughs> Come on, Mary, tell us what happened. Oh. Well, I drove up to Las Vegas with Jack. It was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon when he pulled up to the Flamingo. I had already reserved my room by phone, but you know Jack. He always leaves everything for the last minute. Gee, this is a beautiful lobby, isn't it, Mary? It sure is. 
A lot of people are here, too. Say, Mary, I'm going over and talk to the room clerk. Gee, this hotel really is... May I help you, sir? Yes, yes, I'd like to get a room here. Well, it's quite an honor having you visit the hotel, Mr. Benny. Oh, you know who I am? Yes, yes, I saw you once in the movies. You did? Yes, you were sitting right next to me. <laughs> Well, thank you. Now, uh, I, uh, I'd i like to get a room. Uh, yes, sir. Now, let me see. Uh, here's one. Two fifty. Two fifty? Isn't that a kind of expensive? Oh, that's not the price. That's the room number. Oh, oh, I see. It's on the second floor. Uh, yes, sir. It has beautifully decorated bedroom, a magnificently furnished sitting room, luxurious dressing room, and a huge entry hall. Well, that sounds nice. Uh, what's the price on it? Sixteen dollars. Uh, clerk, I'll loosen his collar. You push his eyes back in. I'm all right. I'm all... Now, look, clerk, I've had a... had a... Jack, what are you staring at? That cash register. I've never seen anything so beautiful. That's a slot machine. A slot machine? Say, I've heard about them, but this is the first one I've ever seen. How do they work? Well, you put in a nickel and pull the handle. And if two cherries come up, you get five nickels back. Well, that's fair, isn't it? <laughs> and if three oranges come up, you get 11 nickels back. Say, that's fine. Now, if three bells come up, you get 18 nickels. No kidding. And if three bars come up, you get the jackpot. Well, that's sensational. But supposing I put my nickel in and none of those things you mentioned come up? In that case, you lose your nickel. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> A thing like that will never catch on. <laughs> Jack, Jack, will you please hurry? Just a minute, Mary. Now, look, Clark, I'm willing to stay here if you lower the rates. Let me speak to the manager. Very well, he's right here. Uh, uh, Mr. Benny, this is Mr. Schiller, the manager of the Flamingo. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Schiller. How do you do? Uh, look, Mr. Schiller, I want to get a room and get some rest. I just drove all the way from Beverly Hills to Las Vegas. I make that trip frequently. It's a beautiful drive. It is? I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh... Well, Mr. Benny, if you'll give me the keys to your car, I'll have the bellboy park it. Oh, it's that Maxwell right out in front there, huh? Oh, is that your car? Yes. Then we owe you an apology. We were using it to mow the lawn. <laughs> well, leave the grass in. It'll make the seat softer. Yeah. Of course, if Schiller's going to get those kind of laughs... I'm... Now, look, Mr. Schiller. Mr. Schiller, I'm very anxious to stay at the Flamingo, but it seems that your clerk and I can't get together... He's so stubborn. Imagine him trying to charge me $16 a week. No, no, Mr. Benny. It's $16 a day. Well, that I won't discuss at all. <laughs> Don't you have any less expensive rooms? Yes, we have some for $5 and some for $7. $5 and $7. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, oh, clerk. Yes, sir? Uh, do you have a suite available? Oh, yes, we do. We have them for $20 a day and $30 a day. I'll take the one for $30. Very well, sir. Here's your key. Thank you. Say, clerk, uh, who was that fellow? He's a private from Nellis Field. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, what about you, sporty? <laughs> I'm still talking to Mr. Schiller. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but there's nothing I can do for you. You see, I have no authority to change the rates. Well, there must be somebody I can talk to. Well, here's the general manager. Oh, Mr. Walsh. Yes. Uh, do you mind talking to this gentleman? No, not at all. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Jack Benny, star of stage, screen, and radio. See? <laughs> oh, Jack Benny. Certainly. I saw your last picture. Really? Did you like it? No. <laughs> Oh, have you ever seen me on television? Yes. Did you like me? No. <laughs> oh, well, 
Well, have you ever heard me on the radio? No. Good, good. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Walsh, the reason I wanted to see you is because Mr. Schiller is trying to tell me that the lowest rate you have here is $5 a day. Well, Mr. Benny, $5 a day for a room is very reasonable. $5 a day, but I intend to stay for seven days. Well, I'm sure you'd enjoy staying at the Flamingo. It costs $6 million to build. Well, what are they trying to do, get it all back for me? <laughs> Jack. I'm leaving. Everybody in the place is looking at you. Mary, this won't take long. Look, Mr. Benny, I'm a busy man, and I've got a lot of things to do. I'll give you a room for $4. You're faded. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll like it here. You know, I supervised the complete furnishing of the Flamingo. I saw to it that all the rooms had telephones, full-length mirrors, writing desks, beautifully carpeted floors, artistic pictures, unique lamps, tables, dressers. Gee, are the beds comfortable? Bed? <laughs> Yes. Well, how do you like that? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. I brought an army cot with me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the $4 room. Well, here's your key, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Come on, Jack. Let's go. Oh, just a minute, Mary. I have a nickel here. I'm going to put it in the slot machine. See, I hope I win. I think I've got a chance to win. <laughs> Mary! Mary, look! Look! Jack, you hit the super jackpot! Yeah, gee, Mary, look at all those nickels! Just a minute, I'll put them in my pocket. Oh, boy. Now, come on, Mary, let's go. Uh, Jack, tip the bellboy who brought the bags in from the car. Uh, you take care of it, Mary. I don't have any change. No. <laughs> come on, let's go! Gentlemen, each year forest fires destroy 30 million acres of timberland. Timberland that is vitally needed to keep our country strong and to raise our production higher than ever before. Most of these fires started because someone was careless. Don't leave campfires burning. Never drop lighted matches or cigarettes. Put them out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Let's join a happy-go-lucky fishing party. A fishing pole and lucky strike, ah, oh, that's the life for me. Each lucky's packed with smoke and joy, cause LSMFT. Yep, fine tobacco means luckies taste better than any other cigarette. I'm out to make a perfect catch, and I'm a real go-getter. I'll fish till I find lucky strike, for luckies do taste better. I mean it, luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, there's a truly enjoyable difference in a lucky. For luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Not just as good, but better. And here's why. Fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco, always gives you the full enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for complete smoking enjoyment, for everything you want in a cigarette, be happy, go lucky, you'll agree with the millions of smokers who know Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really been a lot of fun broadcasting for the boys here at the Nellis Air Force Base. And I want to thank Colonel Tacon, Captain Quinlan, Lieutenant Rawlins, and all the personnel for their wonderful cooperation. Next week, we'll be back in Hollywood, and I hope you'll all be listening. Gee, it sure was swell being here, Mr. Benny. Yes, it was, Dennis. I'm certainly glad that you... <laughs> hmm. Oh, Jack. Yes. You can go now. The part in your hair is straight again. <laughs> They're so thoughtful. Good night, Dennis. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. The Jack Benny program is heard by armed forces overseas with the facilities of the armed forces radio service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.